That's last year's hurricane season, and it includes six major hurricanes. Six of those hurricanes, six of those 17 hurricanes were categories three, four, and five. So it was a very important year in, the, in hurricane history. <clears throat> as engineers, and hopefully architects as well, we need to know what the rail wind speeds were. We cannot know what the rail wind speeds were from the National Hurricane Center for several reasons. One of the reasons is that they have a different mandate from the scientists who work in their sister organization, which is the Hurricane Research Division. The mandate of the Hurricane Research, National Hurricane Center is to advise emergency management agencies like DEM in Barbados. <clears throat> some, some idea of what our neighbors had. This is uh, Hurricane Irma, which devastated Barbuda. You can see Barbuda. That's Barbuda there. And also devastated St. Martin, and caused a lot of damage in Anguilla as well. And those are the wind speeds, three second gust wind speeds in Anguilla and Barbuda, and the category of hurricanes. Now those categories cannot be obtained uh, 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 frivolously. What, because you have, there is guidance on how you get a category of hurricane over land with a three second gust. But what the Saffir Simpson scale is, categories of hurricanes over sea, over the sea, and one minute averages. They're do, sort of different numbers. So category five, for example, overland starts at 73 miles per hour, three second gusts. So um, Barbuda, the small island, and the, the, the news said it was a category five hurricane, and indeed it was a category five hurricane. All the numbers there, which are more than 173 miles per hour, three second gusts on land, indicate category five. There's 181 miles an hour there, for example. So the Barbuda did get Category 5. And then Irma went on to BVI, which had Category 4 hurricane winds, went on to south of the of Turks and Caicos, where Providencial is. Providencial is just this small part here. They had Category 2 and 3 winds. And in, uh, coincidentally, the 124 miles an hour was exactly what the code of practice, the code, the building code, in, K in um, Turks and Caicos required. Grand Turk, which is the capital, the governmental capital, had category one and two hurricane winds over here. And then on to Dominica, which had category three and four hurricane winds. And that is M uh, Maria going through Dominica with wind speeds between 134 and 165 miles per hour, category, uh, category three to four. And those are gust speeds. Now, Puerto Rico was in the news regularly, the, the CNN news regularly after Hurricane Maria. And they indicated that Puerto Rico was really very badly hit by Maria. Nearly category five hurricane, it was said. Mm -hmm. And it said, also said that it was as if a 50 to 60 mile wide tornado raged across Puerto Rico like a buzzsaw. But Puerto Rico only had category four hurricane winds in two very small parts, a very small part here where it made landfall and also a very small part here at the top. The rest, that whole band there is category three. And some of the, some of the other areas in the south, southwest were really tropical storm winds. So most of Puerto Rico, or all of Puerto Rico, had wind speeds less than their building code. We talk, we meant to talk about St. Martin, so I'm getting to that now. That's what Hurricane Irma looked like when it was near the island of St. Martin. That's the track of Irma. That's the track of Irma, the third of September, 4th of September, 5th of September, 6th of September, 7th, etc. 
and St. Martin is a very small island divided between the French and the Dutch. The French and the Dutch. And the wind speeds in St. Martin were the highest recorded, highest um, determined overland any time during the season last year, during 2017. The French St. Martin had the highest wind speeds overland in the 2017 hurricane season. So they had category four and five hurricane winds in St. Martin. And that is the very distinct eye of the hurricane, Hurricane Irma. <clears throat> now, understandably, there was a lot of damage, a colossal amount of damage on both the French and the Dutch sides. In Dutch St. Martin, the loss of roofs was quite commonplace, as it would be in any island hit by a category four and five hurricanes. So there you can see the loss of roofs and a close-up of those same roofs. There we are. <clears throat> Things like petrol stations, of course, are very vulnerable to hurricanes and earthquakes, actually. And where the roofs are of shallow pitch, as in this case, the loss of roofs was more significant. However, what is very interesting about St. Martin is how many buildings were undamaged? How many buildings survived Hurricane Irma? And you notice that in this picture, many of the buildings had pyramidal roofs or hip roofs. Here's another aerial view showing how many roofs were on how many roofs were not lost. So success is certainly possible. For me, one of the surprises was that photovoltaic panels, PV panels, fared much better than I expected. So there, this roof was covered with PV panels. Some of them were lost, but most of them stayed on. One of the great losses in Dutch St. Martin was the uh, terminal building. When I went there, which was not immediately after the hurricane, it was in, was in early December. The Princess Juliana Air Terminal was completely out of, out of action. There was no part of that terminal building which was in use when I got there. You arrived under a tent and you departed under a tent. <clears throat> the casinos in Dutch St. Martin, and they were all out of action. And then there are large hotels. This is one of the large hotels, which was completely devastated by Hurricane Irma. And the cladding was removed, the internal partitions were removed, and much else was removed. Here's a picture inside of one of the floors. That's what the hotel looked like. And the winds in the upper, the upper floors did a marvelous job of cleaning the rooms. So this, this room was not cleaned by anything but the wind and the rain. <clears throat> St. Martin lost, there were lots of yachts lost in 1995 with Hurricane Luis, and lots of yachts lost again last year. And what you see there the lots are the yachts which were just damaged, but which are still above water. Most of the yachts, in fact, had sunk. In, um, in Simpsons Bay. In, in the urban part of, the, of St. Martin, Phillipsburg, that's what it looked like. And domestic homes suffered badly, as you can see in this picture and the following picture. And, that's, and then, of course, there are the automobiles. Automobiles. My, my host in St. Martin was Dr. Best, and uh, his car was also. Uh, treated in the same way as this photograph indicates. Now here's a very interesting picture. That's the office of the permits department, the people who give permission to build. <laughs> yeah. 
they, um, they are the ones who check designs and say, yes, the design is in order, you can build. And they check construction and say, construction is order, you can occupy the building. And that's their building. Let's go on to French St. Martin. Now, French St. Martin, it was a new experience of French St. Martin because in previous hurricanes, uh, French St. Martin had not been badly affected. But this time there were loss of roof covering, loss of roof and wall cladding. But there again, as in Dutch St. Martin, there are lots of roofs which did not come off. Many roofs survived the strongest winds, wind, winds in the 2017 hurricane season. And one of the characteristics of those roofs, those lightweight roofs, was the shape. Success is feasible, no loss of roof covering, but the roofs have that particular shape. That particular shape means that the wind loads are lower than they would be on a flat roof, on a, or on a gable roof, or on a monofish roof. So there are many examples. I'm sorry? Even when the windows got blown out, would those roofs still, still remain on? Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, the, the wind loads on the roof are, is a combination of internal pressure and external suction. So the external suction is sufficient, is greater than the internal pressure usually. So that dominates the overall wind. So there are many examples of, of, of roofs which did not come off even though they had 182 mile per hour winds, 182 mile per hour winds. <clears throat> Destruction of wall cladding, principally in commercial buildings and in the, the apartments and hotels, the loss of both the accordion shutters and the glass sliding doors. That's another picture of a, in Grand Cass of the loss of wall cladding and glass doors. Uh, Hotel Mercur is close to the coast and b properties near the coast were severely impacted. As you can see in the series of photographs. But note here that even though clearly the, 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 the waves came ashore, as you can see the debris on the ground, even this coastal property, the roofs are still on. So the main, the main story for me is that success is feasible. That we, are, we, are, we, can, we, we know that if we pay attention to our designs, analysis, and detailing, and maintenance, that we can have great hurricanes without disasters. We want to be able to enjoy our great hurricanes of the future. <laughs> it's very exciting, exciting phenomena. <clears throat> of course, waves can cause a lot of damage and uh, we really ought to advocate for a policy which has been adopted for centuries by Brazil, by Argentina, by Uruguay and by Britain. Don't allow any buildings between the coastal highway and the coast. None. You go to Rio, all the great beaches of Rio have no buildings on them. You go to the great beaches in Argentina, no buildings on them. You go to Montevideo in Uruguay and there was seven, hundred, seven kilometers of, of, of a beach in the middle of the city, no buildings on them. The buildings are across the road. The big hotels are across the road. Yeah. We made a mistake in the Caribbean. And then <clears throat> telecommunications towers. There's really no reason why telecommunic telecommunications towers should fail. That's a failure of procurement. It's not the strong winds, but a failure of procurement. And there are a lot of industrial buildings on the French side which were destroyed. 
And I'll come to, I'll give you the reason in a short time. These are all in the, on the French side. A lot of large buildings were destroyed. Several steel frames did not perform well. And then there was looting. And notice the composure of this group of three people. <laughs> you know, there's, they're not trying to hide. They're not running. They're strolling down the street with a lot of goods. And there was a lot of looting on both the French and the Dutch side. And uh, this was a major problem. Now let's talk about some of the specifics. Building control in St. Martin is governed by a national ordinance. It's not casual. In Barbados, we do not have building control yet. It's being debated now in Parliament, in the, in the Senate, not in the, not in the lower house, and no debates in the lower house. But in St. Martin, Dutch St. Martin, there is a national ordinance, a national decree. But the main contents of these documents are dated 19. 35. So in 1935, they must have been way ahead of their time. Now they're way behind their time. I wasn't even born in 1935, and I'm the oldest person in this room, by far. So within their code, there's a section for reinforced concrete, dated 1930. And there's no attempt to revise the 1935 document, which includes information on reinforced concrete from 1930. <clears throat> I brought back a copy of the, the, the document. It's in Dutch, so I couldn't read it. I gave it to a Dutch friend of mine, and I asked him to, to read it. And he told me that throughout the document, there's no mention of the following words. No mention of wind, no mention of torrential rain, no mention of earthquake, no mention of hurricane. It is not a requirement for development approval in St. Martin to design for those phenomena. I spoke to the person who, uh, who was the head of the, the department whose picture I just showed you. I spoke to him. He sounded very intelligent. And I said, I said, is it true that the document you're using is 1935? He said, yes. I said, if I design in accordance with that document and make no attempt to design for wind or earthquakes or rain, would you approve it? He said, yes. Of course, my only obligation is to see that your project complies with the 1935 standard. I have no obligation to check on these other more modern phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have those things in 1935. <laughs> yeah. I told him that's interesting because we stopped having those things in Barbados in 1955 <laughs> because after our earthquake in 1953, which you all don't know about, the one that destroyed Common Mayor School, and our hurricane Janet in 1955, uh, uh, Sir Granty Adams went to Parliament and they passed a law in Barbados abolishing earthquakes and hurricanes. <laughs> that is the reason why we haven't had them. So, but, but people do design for, for, for wind in St. Martin. The problem is they don't design for any uniform standard because the uniform standard doesn't exist. The 1935 did not have anything about wind People do design for wind, but they do whatever they feel appropriate for their particular circumstance. Now, the French Antilles is completely different. They take building control very seriously, more seriously than anywhere else in the Caribbean. Nevertheless, they were devastated by Hurricane Irma. The system they have in the French Antilles is, uh, is independent review by Bureau de Control or checking offices. And they check the designs and they check the quality control methods during construction. <clears throat> the, the standards are prescribed by law. But the standard prescribed by law for French St. Martin is ridiculous. It's 36 meters per second, 
10 minute average at a 10 meter height. That is a lower standard than anywhere in the Eastern Caribbean north of Grenada. Much lower standard than St. Vincent, Barbados, St. Lucia, Dominica, Martinique, uh, not Martinique, Martinique has the same bad standard. So they have been doing, they've been doing very good uh, building control on the basis of a very poor standard in the, in, in the, in the French, French side. 115 miles per hour, that's their standard for French St. Martin. The wind speeds in French St. Martin range from 165 to 192 miles per hour, three second gusts. So the wind forces were between two and two and a half times more than the basic St. Martin standard. So they had devastation because the Bureau of Control were enforcing an inadequate standard. Nevertheless, there are many buildings in French and Martin which were not damaged. So success is obviously possible. So here are my conclusions. Hurricane Irma was an unusually strong wind event. It is not surprising that the damage and destruction in St. Martin was severe. Many buildings weathered the hurricane with little or no damage, indicating that success is within reach if the aim is to prevent disasters. In the case of lightweight roofs, those with hip geometries performed demonstrably well. Let me pause here. We can design, engineers can design any shape of roof to be safe in any level of hurricane. However, the, 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 sh the shapes which are most favorable, which can be built least expensively and still survive, need to have certain shapes, need to be of certain shapes. And the hip shape is, is over a rectangular plan is well known for that characteristic. <clears throat> There's a serious communications gap between the Commonwealth Caribbean on the one hand and the French and Dutch islands on the other hand because their well-researched and documented hazard assessments developed in the past decade by internationally acclaimed experts in the field of wind and seismic hazards for the Eastern Caribbean. However, they were focusing principally on an English-speaking audience and are not well known in either Dutch St. Martin or French St. Martin. So there needs to be much better sharing of such scientific information among all Caribbean communities because the earthquake and the hurricane does not recognize uh, national borders or different, different languages. There's an urgent need for St. Martin to adopt an up-to-date standard replacing its 1935 code for all new buildings. It's very interesting how they don't learn from mistakes because Dutch St. Martin had 200% GDP losses in 1995 according to the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. 200% of GDP was lost in Hurricane Luis in Dutch St. Martin. And then in 1998, they were, had bad damage from Hurricane George. In 1999, they had damage from Hurricane Lenny. And last year, they had significant damage from Hurricane Irma. So the home, the mother country, the Netherlands, has now, is now giving them 550 million euros to a very small population. I don't know what population, but about 40,000 people in Dutch St. Martin. 550 million euros to help them with rebuilding. And they've imposed two conditions on that grant. One condition is that the legislature in Dutch St. Martin must pass anti-corruption legislation. That's reasonable. The other condition is that they must tighten up their immigration uh, um, procedures because it's very easy for people to go and live and work in St. Martin. There are over 100 nationalities in Dutch St. Martin. So they want the, those two conditions to be met. There's no condition about the technical standards, in spite of the fact that the official standard is from 1935, the motherland, the Netherlands, is not imposing any condition having to do with technical standards. So that's 
the demonstration that you don't learn from your mistakes. There's one hospital in Dutch St. Martin. It was damaged by Lewis in 95. It was damaged by George in 98. I went there after George. They had a procedure. They were, had a recommendation for how to repair it in 1998. They didn't do it. It was damaged in 1999 by Lenny. It was damaged. And the damage is the same in the same nature of the same nature each time. And that's damaged last year by Irma. Four times it was damaged in the same way in 23 years. 